नमस्ते गुड इवनिंग एंड सलाम वालेकुम डिस्टिंग्विश मेंबर्स एंड गेस्ट्स आई टेक दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू दिस इवनिंग्स वेबिनार व्हिच इज ऑन अ टॉपिक ऑफ इमेंस इंपॉर्टेंस इन टुडेस टाइम्स इन पर्टिकुलर इट्स अबाउट अनलॉकिंग ऑफ रिटेल एंड दिस वेबिनार इज बीइंग कंडक्टेड अंडर द ऑस्पिसेस ऑफ आरएसएल फोकस ग्रुप we have two eminent speakers and i would like to welcome them uh, this evening mr rajesh nagji and mr shalin shukla and in order to take this evening forward we have the new elected convener of rsle group mr sahitya chaturvedi uh, to take this evening forward and i'm sure you people will benefit a lot from what's going to unfold in uh, next uh, uh, few seconds or a, a minute or so so welcome to both of you and uh, saitya ji wish you all the best for this uh, your first uh, webinar before i hand over to saitya ji i would like to wish all of you happy ganesh chaturthi and a happy islamic new year with that and without much ado i would pass on to mr saitya chaturvedi ji a uh, convener rsle group to take this evening forward thank you so much mr dilip sena for a beautiful opening and for unlocking this retail in the present lockdown challenges honorable chairman the board the focus group conveners the invited guest speakers and the international audience today present in this august gathering please accept my warm welcome in the virtual auditorium of ibpc dubai over the next 50 to 55 minutes we will be discussing the two specific subjects one is in the post covid challenges how to quickly take off and the second what are the omni channel challenges and the opportunities so please help yourself in this new normal style with your tea coffee snacks in the new normal ambience and uh, also input your questions in the chat box with the relevant subject and with the relevant speakers of course at the end of the session we will be having a question and answer session in the webinar the strategy part will be taken up by mr rajesh nagji and the online opportunities of e-commerce will be addressed by mr shelin chopla so first let me briefly introduce our guest speakers the firstly the known name is mr rajesh nagji rajesh nagji he is a ceo coach based in dubai he is the founder of ceo's business growth program basically he born in a business family owns his own enterprises in india as well as internationally including in dubai he is mba backed with so many awards and certifications from uk usa and many more countries so let us welcome him on board to mentor us today the other guest speaker is mr shalin shukla who is presently heading a e-commerce marketplace and in his previous assignments he has been associated as business head in jumbo electronics group dubai and has worked with uh, reliance industries vedanta tns modi group of industries so lot of experience back of the experience the genius speakers are here furthermore he is mba and qualified professional from iim ahmedabad having more than 30 years experience so namaskar rajesh bhai and uh, shukla ji both together and dear Thank audience you. both the two speakers the one is mentor the other is implementer the both are having the 30 years plus experience and both have seen the ups and downs of the cycle of the economic challenges globally as well as in gcc 
so today let us take the another route that the challenge we need to unlock the opportunities and let us take the knowledge part from mr rajesh nagji so again a warm welcome sir we know that you are a ceo coach and more importantly you are helping the entrepreneurs to reinvent themselves so starting with my question may i request your thoughts on covid 19 its impact on business in the totality and especially in the retail sector over to you sir thank you so much for inviting me and having me be present today with ibpc one of the most prominent organizations for india's business professionals in this part of the world probably the largest and uh, it's a great honor and uh, before i start i would like to today dedicate my contributions to my greatest coach my father who passed away 30 years back so covid 19 the impact on business retail sector there's so much that we have heard we are experiencing we are living through but there is one you know common element that is very very new with covid 19 and that is social distancing nobody was prepared for social distancing and the impact that it has on our lives and when we talk about uh, you know the retail sector retail shopping broadly is divided into four different dynamics convenience impulsive then people shop around for high ticket items and then speciality purchases in this four parts impulsive shopping constitutes about 2/3 of the entire dollar spend and that is where the real impact is being felt because convenience people will find their ways for all the things that they require and uh, so this is one aspect that we got to bear in mind the second aspect is the modality of uh, of how the shopping is going to unfold you know in the virtual world in the physical shopping with ease and experience playing a very very big role there and the types of things that people buy comply with the needs wants desires feel good luxury urgency all intersecting with cash conservation in these tough times the bottom line is its old configurations that worked are not likely to work anymore so covid 19 is a huge pattern interrupt new patterns and formulas are needed almost every prediction seems to agree that there is disruption and it's a hard reset of the whole world yes there is no doubt of that and unfortunately the bitter truth is that that not only covid 19 sir if we just recollect the january 2020 where the bush fire started in australia and the devastating floods in indonesia there has been so many natural calamities unfortunately this year other side of the forex volatility the fluctuations in the metal the gold in spite of that if we go to count the pandemic things yes there are so many but may you pen like some of the critical challenges how we can maintain the growth or we can proceed forward the revenue attaining the same and increasing the same i think your strategies can be helpful to mitigate these challenges what the enterprises are facing today it's a very interesting way in which you frame the question saidya ji you know what flashed in my mind was uh, somewhere in the early part of the 70s 1970 to 75 i used to be a very avid sailor and i was selected to sail for india in the asian games 
and as we were preparing the games were going to the sailing part was being conducted in bombay harbor and being uh, you know one of those sort of people who like to prepare a lot i was studying all the trends of the tides and the winds and so many things internationally and all the rest of it so i went and told my coach listen i really don't know how to process all this information and so he asked me what tell me what's happening so i was telling him about all these different forces of nature that i was studying and i didn't know what the impact of that's going to be on the racing day so he said two things to me so the first thing he said is that look the, the race is going to happen in protected bombay harbor and in the protected bombay harbor you know all these forces that you are looking at you know in far away places how far they will have relevance that's number 1 number 2 that there are only two forces that are going to be working on your boat one is the wind the other is the tide and it's you know your uh, skill on managing these two forces to propel yourself and move forward that kind of was a very interesting you know realization and it brought me into focus so when i'm looking at uh, you know all the trends that are happening there's so much of content that is being put out there in various different forums and people are speculating so many things learned people are offering trends and so on and so forth so the question really comes down to in our real realm around us how many of these are really really relevant and what do we really need to focus on Exactly. the second question sorry exactly exactly i concur with that yeah and the second question is you know when uh, i was sailing and going for all the practice rounds i saw all kinds of boats mine was a small boat they were from small to very big boats and then a thought crossed my mind how much water does a boat or a ship require to be afloat and the answer to that is it depends on the size of the port it depends on the size of the ship the smaller the boat the less the water and the bigger the ship the more the water so if we really look at our own enterprise we'll begin to get that not all businesses have the same requirement so for example if if the economy is shrinking and if all you require metaphorically is 2 meters of water to float then you know what's the point of getting so kind of uh, troubled by all the big conversations which are going on for big business and big ships and countries and all the rest of it so when you keep these two things in mind it's kind of a reality check but what are the real challenges so the challenges are this fluctuating demand as we can all see everybody is in cash conservation mode you know then we've got to worry in covid times of our own people and their safety then there's disruption in supply chains you know there are there's a client of mine that I'm working with he was sharing that uh, so they run very large uh, departmental stores hypermarkets and so on and so forth that currently the supply chain disruption is so massive that only 26% of what they are ordering is being supplied so that has a huge impact on uh, on business then the next piece is the fulfillment challenges how are we going to you know not every company is uh, is geared up for uh, for you know home delivery and so on and so forth and then the last bit is brand loyalty you know brand loyalty becomes a completely different uh, uh, you know subject when we are talking about everything going virtual the next piece after that is uh, you know virtual interface now i'm going to share my story so in a virtual interface what is our readiness maturity so my story really is i have very low virtual interface and low readiness maturity so there's a total disruption in my model i had a beautiful purpose built center when i realized that because of this social distancing not very likely that people will come and congregate there it was a beautiful center for 50 business owners to come together then the target audience you know is basically they they are they're no longer seeking 
you know, what I was offering. So my product mix came into very sharp uh, kind of, you know, scrutiny and the value proposition. So I spent three months in recalibrating, reinventing and rebooting and my new target audience and new value proposition, new product mix. So I became like a sunflower. Now there is a, a myth that sunflowers move along with the sun in the direction of the sun. Mature sunflowers always face east. Whereas a young sunflower plant not only tracks the sun during the day, but also reorients at night in anticipation of dawn. So I decided to become a young sunflower and started looking at where are the opportunities and who can I help with and how can I move things forward. Saitya ji. Yeah, there is uh, some interruption. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. No problem. Yeah, great. So the basically you need to say that it is not that always the sunflower is moving with the sun. It is it is focusing the target. So uh, the if we take the targets and the and the particular pain points, if we can target those pain points and uh, those challenges can be identified, I think that you need to say that those challenges can be mitigated like supply chain, only 26% is being supplied, the brand loyalty, as you mentioned, and the virtual interface. So uh, our target audience today, uh, or I can say that participants who have joined so far, is not only Dubai, they are from the international cities, uh, other than Dubai, UAE, that Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, I can see and can find in the, even Maldives also is here. So, Basically, the focusing in UAE, our audience, the participants are SMEs, mid to large level enterprises. So being a coach, what would you like to advise the business owners and particularly the decision makers so that they can quickly take off in this new normal world? See, one of the things that I'm finding is a very interesting way to approach this question is that, uh, you know, there are vendors and suppliers, which is where we are, and there are our customers. Now, customers, you know, don't want to buy a single product or service. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I want to buy this or that. In effect, what they're doing is that they are trying to do a job. And to do that job, they require products and services. So if we can identify what job are they trying to do? And as we start exploring that question, what becomes apparent is that the job that they were trying to do in the earlier, you know, equilibrium of the world seems to have shifted. And most people today have reoriented the job that they're trying to do is first is survival. Now, to what extent are our you know, products and services a good fit for survival jobs? So I'll give you an example. My clients shifted from scaling up and big growth to wanting more sales, cash and profit because it now became a survival conversation. Now, the problem is that my speciality is I offer a mind gym to reinvent and develop new competencies to increase capability to thrive in a disruptive world. And there's a big drop in demand for this. As the shift is subtle from preparing for disruption to surviving in disruption. So my old target audience was the sweet spot. I've been working across the board, but the sweet spot was between $5 million to $20 million kind of turnover. And they were looking to scale up for big growth and now need, now they need more sales and profits. The new target audience that has emerged is either below $1 million who want to survive or over $100 million. And they are looking for succession planning, setting up a family office, things like that. So the point really here is that if we can focus in what 
is the job that our target audience is trying to do? And do we have products and services that connect with that job that they're trying to do? Or are we trying to push our products and services to a target audience which does not want them or does not need them in the present reality, in the present situation? So unless there is a connect there, there is no way in which business is going to get reinvented and move forward. So for retail, for example, you know, it's everybody is very clear it's about quickly organizing to lead consumers in an online retail journey at the confluence of information, experience, inspiration, entertainment, and exploring. Now, this is why people go to, you know, for shopping experiences. So how can we replicate these on uh, online as opposed to just having offers out there? So the companies that are able to do this will be the ones that can reinvent and move forward. Yeah. So you mean to say that the relevance and the innovation is the key success mantra as of now in this present situation where uh, the product should be according to the target audience, not that we should find the target audience according to the product. So you very well said, that. very, very well said, very well said. Uh, see, I, I, I fully agree with you and the way you are giving the examples and the theory uh, attest to that. Certainly the challenges are high and the collective efforts are required and the strategies are definitely imperative in this situation. And this is not a one day or one hour task. It's a journey altogether. So moving forward, uh, before I move to the e-commerce and the online, that most uh, interesting and exciting subject, uh, Mr. Nalti, uh, I will like to put up, it can be a little silly, but in this present situation, what is working and what is not working? Can you please highlight a few of the tips on that? So I can just quickly share about, you know, the kind of uh, visionary entrepreneurs I'm working with and for each bracket, there are, you know, very clear jobs that they're trying to do that are emerging. And as I'm sort of interacting with them on those jobs, there is a, there is a very good, you know, flow and a lot of traction is beginning to, you know, show up. So I'm working with a very wide range of entrepreneurs from $1 million to $1 billion. And I'm finding a lot of specific interest in different brackets. So for example, from 100 million to 1 billion, they want facilitation for succession and leadership transits, mediate on family office dynamics, and next generation wealth creation mentoring, and rationalize their lifestyles. Between 20 million and 100 million dollars, they're looking for facilitation on cost rationalization and top grading of their staff, facilitate innovations in product mix, pricing mix, and upgrade customer experiences. Between 5 million and 20 million dollars, it's about facilitating cost cutting, facilitate innovations to improve sales, cash flows, and profits. And below 5 million, it's about rationalize the business model, innovations and value proposition, upgrade product mix and bundling, and creative pricing strategies based on marginal costing. So if you really look at the segments that you're serving, there are very specific jobs that people are trying to do. And as long as we are able to connect with them, then, you know, every, so business starts to grow. So about 95 million years back, a big meteorite hit the world, creating huge climatic changes. The mighty dinosaurs were not able to adapt and become, they all became extinct. COVID-19 is a metaphorical meteorite that has hit the world, creating huge climatic changes in local and world economies. The writing is on the wall, adapt and innovate or die. The opportunities of innovation are at the intersection of the outer game of business and our inner game. So the outer game concerns strategy, which is strengths, weakness, opportunities, threats, plus resources and how we align them to gain traction and grow our companies. 
And the inner game concerns psychology, where we want to develop our mental stamina to operate in a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. So the goal of innovation is to increase the probability of success and decrease the time to success. And all leaders do only four things. They ask, listen, speak, and acknowledge. That's all that we do as leaders. We ask, we listen, we speak, and acknowledge. And the strength of a chain is equal to the strength of the weakest link. And leadership effectiveness is governed by the weakest of these four links. The default weak link for most leaders is listening. Turns out there are seven sins. So I've got a, uh, you know, a course that you can download at rajeshnagi.7sins. And the, if you look at an SUV, you know, like a Toyota Land Cruiser, it makes a lot of progress in loose desert sand. But the moment you get the SUV on tarmac roads, the acceleration shoots maybe 10x or 50x as on sand. So successful leaders with poor listening are like powerful SUVs driving in loose sand. So this is one of the pivot points that can have a huge impact on how we listen carefully to the unfolding scenario and craft strategies that work. Wow, so nicely uh, portrayed. Thank you so much, Mr. Nagy. I think uh, the questions are coming, have started coming in the Q&A box and very particular to the psychology and the mental maths as you are the expert in that. The audience is recognizing and uh, simultaneously the people are also eager to hear Mr. Shabin Shukla. So, Mr. Shalin, uh, I just move on to Mr. Shalin Shukla that uh, he is a think tank. He is a consultant, a successful business leader, heading the e-commerce function. So, Mr. Shukla, may you tell us in brief about the omni-channel, the available opportunities and the critical challenges behind it. Over to you. Uh, thank you so much, Sahityaji, and uh, thank you for IVPC for providing this opportunity for us to, you know, hear each other and in such august company of Mr. Nagji and uh, yourself. So, uh, I mean, it's quite enlightening to hear Mr. Nagji. So, I am very junior and maybe, you know, what I say is uh, more of stories I will try and weave from the various data and other points, you know, that we read from uh, various sources. So, uh, to be very honest, omni-channel in the Middle East was in a very nascent stage because of the cultural, uh, you know, preferences that we have. You know, we love to go out to the malls, we love to eat out, we we love to watch cinema, and we love to, you know, do physical shopping online. Unlike unlike some other countries in the Europe and the U.S., where it's uh, predom predominantly e-commerce. And suddenly, you know, we were hit by this lockdown and not just uh, the COVID, but the lockdown, which really, you know, changed the, uh, you know, buying patterns of the customers upside down. And we didn't know what hit us because for us, uh, we were proud to be omni-channel, but our physical stores were still doing 95, uh, you know, 98% of the business and online was only 1%, 2%. And suddenly we had to scale up 3x, 5x, 10x, and we didn't have enough staff to do that. We didn't have, the malls were closed. We didn't have enough stocking points to do that. The supply chain was sluggish. Uh, initially, China was closed and people who had, you know, uh, sourcing from other places like India, Bangladesh, Turkey, and uh, Egypt, they were also, you know, suffering. So supply chain was, uh, disruption was another issue. Everybody, you know, used to talk big about de-risking and, you know, being present in multiple countries. But end of the day, they found out that even if you, you were present in multiple countries, maybe the TV screens were only made in Wuhan. You know, as a very interesting uh, thing happened with uh, one of the large TV brands, I don't want to name them. 
that their entire factories were working except that they didn't have the tv screen uh, where they had some 3 4 or 5 factories in wuhan and which was uh, badly hit in hit initially so people were not ready for this so omni channel retail had to think through as to shops were closed malls were closed rents were still being billed they were you know into long term contracts and their costs were not easy to get rid of in the gcc you know where people live on visas you know it's not so easy to downsize in terms of employees in terms of other resources you have other fixed cost of you know shops and rentals and you know the cost of other overheads you know partly maybe manpower almost everybody went into the fast gear and started downsizing but that was not the answer because still you were not able to sell and the shops were closed there were not enough courier companies available to ship what number of orders you were getting as a matter of fact if you ordered on certain dates at that point in time things like three dates promises of six days seven days and this we are talking about the very large or the largest retailers in grocery space and not the small ones they could not fulfill in time they could not deliver in time they didn't have enough stocks and uh, people were hoarding uh, you know things like mad everybody was trying to order online so there were very few true omni channel players you know who were able to keep the you know online services going as well as uh, you know uh, manage the reduction in sales from the physical stores so for a lot of them uh, omni channel players it was a very very sad story as most of them didn't know what hit them and they were not ready for this wave of e-commerce yeah that's that's the challenge yeah so and the opportunity is also the people so what do you think how sustainability is there because there are the sharp increases in the health and safety products the grocery e-commerce is increased sharply significantly simultaneously uh, the fashion and uh, luxury area the uh, apparel area is uh, significantly dramatically declined uh, even the data if we compare the analytics that what was the post covid what was do and uh, what is in the during the covid period if we take the first quarter january to march and then then april to june and then july and august what is going on there are the statistics is highly fluctuating there is the trend is not getting saturated any anyway we understand the time cannot lead to settle the statistics but what type of the sustainability that shift what has happened from pre covid during covid and post covid that what do you think that how much is the sustainability of this shift from physical retail to the online retail uh, you have touched a very valid point you know a very big trend that everybody is noticing is the explosion in the sale of grocery retail you know which used to be very small in this uh, part of the world whereas in rest of the world it's a very big ticket item because grocery is repeat purchase you know you buy milk every day you buy uh, bread every day you buy eggs every day as opposed to a costly you know 1000 dollar mobile phone which you may buy once in a year or a you know 2000 dollar tv which you may buy maybe once in two years so the whole focus in this region has been on electronics and fashion and cosmetics and uh, nobody focused on grocery and suddenly grocery exploded you know so we have had examples of you know so many large grocery stores now moving on to dark stores creating only fulfillment centers for faster fulfillment you know new uh, couriers adding to their capacity and a uh, lot of other things happening but just to give an example of some good news and some bad news in the space you know for example you know in philippines which is uh, you know one of the biggest market for garments after bangladesh it's poised to furlough as many as 54000 garment employees or roughly 30% of the sector's workforce until uh, 
the good news the good news is walmart e-commerce grew by 97% in q2 of 2020 so see these are the people who invested in technology in time and they were able to leverage that during the lockdown and after the lockdown started open opening gradually uh, the trends emerging were that you know drop shipping you know by by buying you know maybe cheap products and selling them on a flashy website with the help of uh, social media drop shipping is enabling you know thousands of uh, e-commerce players across the world uh, you know to make a lot of money without actually having any warehouse or any store you know you just put up a product on the website and supply it directly from the manufacturer or the original wholesaler of the product and companies like target which is similar to walmart but uh, focusing on like electronics uh, they are fulfilling 90% of the orders as same day service from their stores so that is good use of your stores not as a selling point but as a stocking point where you can reach the customer very fast and uh, you know that helped them to power really eye popping uh, second quarter results and their investments in digital stores and merchandise mix uh, you know really laid the groundwork for their uh, fantastic growth so these are some of the good news also which are coming in the omni channel space where people are doing well people who had invested in time people who were ready for uh, you know moving moving online because that was the only only thing which uh, was going to grow and there there are mall operators like cbl you know one of the largest mall operator in us which has filed for bankruptcy there's tj max which had such huge uh, supply chain and logistical challenges that uh, even though you know it was doing well online there were not enough stocks to you know fulfill all the orders and most middle east consumer you know part, particularly in the gulf state are among the most connected and digitally savvy customers in the world as uh, informed by bain and google and very high level of uh, internet and smartphone penetration is there in uae in saudi arabia where people are spending almost 8 to 10 uh, hours a day sometimes online including the office and the personal uh, work so people who had firm foundations of e-commerce were able to move that move into that space and we have seen explosive growth in companies like uh, shopify you know shopify share you know has rocketed maybe 400 times i don't remember the exact figures you know so these are the websites who are enabling you to go online in one day two day people are even giving one hour promises that if you have your domain name ready maybe you can uh, you know go online it's 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 on your depends on your speed how fast you can create a store the website is ready they have shipping uh, you know pre pre sort of integrated they have payment gateways in- integrated and they have millions of themes you know you go to these uh, places you can create a website and uh, your website can be up and running so there's explosive growth in companies who are providing enabling e- e-commerce services so today if you are a buyer seller you could go online in one day if you are a tailor you could go online in one day if you are a small mom and pop grocery store you could go online in one day and despite not having any delivery mechanism these websites come bundled with courier services you know you don't have to sign a contract with anyone any of the large couriers or the small couriers will come and pick your goods so if you were a co- if you were a grocer in satwa and you were only supplying maybe people in four buildings near you now you know you go online you can supply in whole dubai because there's somebody doing delivery and there's somebody to help you go online and you can go online in a matter of one hour one day you know this friend of mine today he said that in egypt he tried to create a store on such website it took him just 10 minutes to create a store and upload at least one product and that too from his mobile phone wow. so e-commerce is the way forward all omni channel players have to focus on their e-commerce abilities and maybe you know move out of costly stores cut their cost in terms of rentals manpower i'm sure they've already optimized and make a product mix whereby you know you know that what is selling more today people are not going to office so it's obvious that cars will not sell more service uh, will go down tires are not selling uh, 
you know the clothes required for going to office are not selling but since people are working from home tablets are selling more for kids you know their online online education these electronic tablets are selling more for people to work from home people have bought huge number of laptops they have bought huge number of home improvement items because they are spending more time at home they have bought new tvs because they are spending on home so you have to look at new product mix new ways of selling and you know how you can engage more online rather than just offline and you know depending on people to come out would be a big challenge i don't see people coming out in the big way in the next one or two years also as they were doing earlier i think you are you are covering by own that that the questions what the generally i was having class from the audience uh, yes you are having the bundle of offers the bundle of opportunities and i think we should request separately that if you can give those information in the writing so that we can circulate among our members and the audience that where how means in the minutes if the online store can be started it is a wow news for all of us yes uh, yes it is possible and and i if i i today that subjects are so varying in nature that one side is the strategy that inner game and the other side is the need of the hour what we are touching upon so it is a contrast subject today we are discussing but the similarity what we found is it is a customer behavior it is the change in uh product mix it is a uh, change in the price mix as mr rajesh also very acutely highlighted with the experience and uh, the psychological move uh if i take it from the online and your uh, retail experience are you finding any change in the behavior of men and women shopping because as you are mentioning it's 8 hours 10 hours that what is this any change in men and women or among the generations that lower age the senior age or even the product categories partly you have already highlighted that area but the growth what we are seeing in totality but if we go and identify the areas whether it is grocery or it is the electronic i think there can be a big difference in that so my question is because the product mix the price mix what we learned from the previous speaker is based from the customer's behavior we have to understand how the customer is behaving in this new normal world so one of my query coming that what is the behavioral change in men and women in generation to mature generation to the senior generation or i can say that kids kids to the seniors uh i don't think uh, there is a huge change in terms of uh, you know gender related uh, buying but uh, there is a huge shift uh, there's a friend of mine who's uh, you know the supply chain head of a very large uh, uh, furniture store and he said that now that you know people are staying at home for a very long time he said our furniture fail- sales through e-commerce have hit the roof and they have they have 150 or 200 percent growth and primarily because you know like men may not like it so much but ladies are conscious and you know they want to have a nice home and they are you know uh, conscious about their kids education so they are buying laptops ladies are buying tablets for their kids they are buying uh, you know accessories for their own uh, you know use when they are working from home and you know a lot of home improvement is happening so i think home improvement is something which was not i mean people were not buying sofas and dining tables online uh, to the best of my knowledge because uh, you know people like to have a touch and feel of these things and you know then buy it but suddenly the furniture sale has exploded uh, despite so called tightening of belt you know tvs are selling in huge numbers a uh, consumer uh, audio is selling in huge numbers because you are watching more movies and you are uh, you know watching uh, you want good tvs you want good experience you want uh, good audio experience so you are buying a lot of audio and these kind of changes are there which are very subtle but e-commerce has really exploded 10 years worth of growth has happened in 8 weeks another winner which has emerged is telemedicine 
10 time growth has happened in just a matter of 15 to 30 days during the lockdown in telemedicine. You know, what was supposed to grow in 10 years has happened in 15 to 30 days. Yeah, remote working, uh, Zoom, from a 2 million audience or 2 million users, they've gone to 200 million users. Uh, remote working has gone up by, you know, 20x or 30x. Remote learning is here to stay. Another winner is remote learning. Remote learning is here to stay. Remote learning in various forms added 250 million people in just two weeks of lo lockdown. Another winner in, the, in this uh, lockdown was online entertainment. Online entertainment has seen growth worth seven years in just five months. So a lot of, lot of changes are there in the you know, consumer behavior, you know. Yeah, no, undoubtedly. from home, yeah, avoiding social. Undoubtedly, media. there are the consumers, the customers, the behavior change and shift because there was no option. That whatever option was available was online, and that that the people who can start that opportunity, grabbing that opportunity, did that. That the question goes back that how much sustainability may remain, and the secondly that presently that what the investors have done. So it is a huge investment in the retail channel. So uh, the, the physical retail, the like conventional modes, yes, few of the changes are required. I think these are the very uh, detailed discussion will be required. Everyone is the business and professional over here in the audience. And uh, if we honor the timeline that uh, last session, we'll be having the question and answer. So particular question which has come to address you, Mr. Shailin, is that I read the question uh, on behalf of Mr. Abhijit Devdhar, that he is asking that for products or services where touch and feel, seeing and believing products or services, how can sellers or service providers make it more lively in e-commerce based products or services. Mr. Avijit, first of all, thank you so much for this nice question. Yes, because I, I work for a perfume company and uh, I, I, can, I can feel that seeing and believing and touching and feeling how, how it is affecting the customer's behavior and the customer's choice. So, Mr. Shailin, over to you. Uh, thank you, Abhijit. And uh, Mr. Saita, your audience Mr. Abhijit is from Mauritius. He's a friend of mine, a uh, friend from Supply Chain Fraternity. So I would try and answer his question. Now, what has happened is that, that people in the absence of, you know, people don't... Perfume, you'll buy something which you've already bought. If you're buying a TV, maybe you'll go for, you know, the top top three or top four or five brands, you know. If you're buying something in the value segment, maybe you don't care so much about the touch and feel or the physical experience. As I already told you that, you know, one of my friends in the furniture business, he was saying that furniture is, I mean, probably in my life ever, I have never bought a sofa set or a bed, you know, without physically sitting on it, you know. So really, it was unexpected that people would change their or rather adopt so fast to online buying that now they no more care about the touch and feel thing. So you are buying TVs without actually seeing the physical picture quality. You are buying a sofa without actually sitting on it and seeing the comfort level. You are buying a bed and a mattress without actually lying down on it and seeing how comfortable it is. So people, people are changing very fast. You know, they are, they are, I mean, humans are very adaptive and we are changing. So, Touch and feel is no more so important, you know, as it used to be earlier. And people will continue to buy online, including things like perfume, you know, where the testing is a must. So perfume, sofas, TVs, and you name it, and that thing will sell without any need for touch and feel. But your yeah, preference will be for brands which you know, you know. Exactly, exactly. The question that the subset, what was addressed by respected previous speaker, Mr. Rajesh, he also touched upon the brand loyalty when he was talking about the product mix and the yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Shailin Shukla. If the questions are coming, we will, we will coming back to you. 
and uh, the question has come to mr rajesh bhai uh, and uh, i think uh, the question is related to one of the quote of tony robbins who says that success is 80% from psychology and the 20% from strategy so here uh, the question has come from mr narin baliga uh, he is saying saying hello to mr rajesh bhai and uh, he is asking that what is your view on the mental health impact of covid on our communities adult students and graduates about to enter the workforce how do you think collectively we can help drive positively hope and courage during these times thank you for the question uh, narinji is a very interesting question so i'm looking at the question from a slightly different perspective and that perspective is you know where did i find myself in this uh, covid impact and what was happening to my mental status and uh, you know how did i find a way to help drive positivity hope and courage during these times because there's a lot that depends on that not only for myself my family but so many of my clients so i came up with a very simple licensing process and i call that the flow state licensing process so flow state is the sum total of motivation energy initiative clarity and drive to make things happen i find that my flow state fluctuates from level 1 which is very low to level 5 which is very high this is like the tide you know coming in going out coming in going out and i've created a very simple licensing system for myself i check to see what is my current flow state and based on the level i check what activities i'm licensing myself to perform this is already written up so i don't have to bother so for example at very low flow states i might do you know i'm licensed to do things like uh, just clean up my space and you know get rid of stuff from my inbox you know pay the bills stuff like that and level 4 level 5 of reserved for very creative work and uh, i notice that my flow state keeps shifting like the tide because i don't make myself wrong i just embrace the flow state that is given to me in the moment and i've shifted to a weekly goal setting plan as opposed to a daily plan i know i'm going to receive 51 hour containers in the week which are color coded black to green corresponding to my flow state and i tag my goals and activities and take them one by one not depending on the priority but depending on what is the flow state that's required and what is the flow state that's available and i find that i'm getting almost everything done in the week so this is one way in which if you can offer to the people around you that the magic is in the energy the magic is in the flow state and the magic is really about how do you you know engage with what is presenting itself and slowly slowly you start gain traction and once you know it's like a the journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step and before you know it you're in action and things just start to happen one by one yeah thank you mr uh, ramesh rajesh sir uh, uh i know that you have touched upon the planning to a greater level and definitely when we do plan which is which can be a short term which can be long term starting from the vision and uh, the behavioral changes i know that your expertise has been for the cash flow management as well you are a mentor you are the ceo's coach as you highlighted in your speech about the revenue and the second part the optimization of the cost the relevance of the cost the marginal costing the decision making areas can you highlight few of the things about the cash flow management as of in this present situations i have created you know 
uh, over the years, I've created an inventory of, you know, cash. So first of all, when you look at cash flow, cash is the only dynamic in business which has a word flow attached to it. You don't say profit flow. You don't say sales flow. You say cash flow. So I started thinking of where does flow occur in nature and obviously flow occurs in, in a river. And so the river generically starts in the mountain. It has tributaries that give water, distributaries, it gets dammed, evaporation, in the end it reaches the sea. So when you look at, uh, you know, that kind of a flow, cash flow, then I started thinking that how many areas are there in business that contribute to cash and deplete cash from the cash flow. And as I started working on it, I was astounded that there's 75 places where cash either gets generated or it, you know, drops. And, you know, if you are any of you are interested, rajeshnagji.com. My name is Rajesh at rajeshnagji.com. Send me an email and I will send you that inventory of 75 places where one by one you can check you know, is cash getting stuck in the system and you will find small, simple steps that you can start taking. And that's going to have a huge impact on cash flows collectively because, you know, if you got your attention on 75 leakage points in a business, you know, with your uh, competence, capability, experience collectively, if everybody looks at it, you know, it's, let's make it simple. You know, things are not complicated. It's like a car, you know, we have, they've made it so simple for us. Check the oil, check the water, check the air pressure. If everything is working, you're ready to go. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I think we are proceeding to 630. Uh, 628 is already there. So from the audience, if there is any question, we, we will wait for that. And we'll be continuing the discussion for some time. Uh, the very interesting part, uh, the 75 points, uh, as you mentioned in the system, that's the car, that whether everything is ready to go. Will you like to mention any top three areas where we should focus? Sir? I would suggest that, you know, this 75 is an easy thing for you. Once you get the inventory, you can go through it. But I have something else that I want to offer in, in, in under a minute or two minutes, if I may. I think the inner game breakthrough is very, very important right now. And this starts with learning the seven sins and one by one overcoming them. So if you go to rajeshnagji.com slash seven sins, I have created a complete course on how to increase your leadership effectiveness by overcoming, by overcoming the seven deadly sins. This is going to have an impact in all your interactions with all your stakeholders. So there was another question that I saw is what are the adaptive skills the businesses are needed in the below $5 million club? And what are the adaptive skills that businesses needed above $5 million and above $1 billion and above $10 billion? The answer is one and the same. There are only four things that leaders do. They ask, they listen, they speak, they acknowledge. They ask, they listen, they speak, and they acknowledge. And out of these four things, listening is the default bottleneck for most leaders. So if you go to this, it's a very beautiful 11-minute set of videos with a you know, PDF that you can download. You go to work on it. During this, this will be one of the best activities that you can do in COVID to create competitive advantage because look at the landscape. Everybody is operating from these seven filters of listening. And if you create a filter there, the source of competitive advantage is something that will just skyrocket for you. Thank you so much, sir. I must uh, say again, uh, my regards and honors to you, both the speakers. Still, there are a few questions. I think one is the question is related to the job market, how the COVID is affecting uh, the dear one audience. I would like to say that 
very soon ibpc will be hosting another webinar in addressing that type of the question which is job market very soon it will be it will be declared in a week or two weeks time uh, the other question has come for again it is online i think the question is what are the ways to get the new launch products which customer the question is asked by jakaria ahmed and he is asking that what are the ways to get the new launch products which customer need to feel touch smell to establish to the new covid normal market as normally online shoppers buy the known products and brands i think it is a common question which is addressing both the things one side it is the real physical retail and the other side the he is uh, touching upon the online habits so mr shukla ji would you like to address this question? okay yeah i'll address this and there was a, another question by irfan sheik asking me customers on e-commerce platform are mainly concentrating on reviews of other customer i'll answer both of these and uh, so people are now taking risk and there are a lot of companies you know fashion companies which will send you you want to buy one say dress a ladies dress and they will send you three so if your size is uh, small they'll send you xs which is extra small small and one size larger you know so you try and you keep the one which you want and you return rest of the true dresses same way you can do with colors you know if you are not sure about colors you can buy two colors three colors try them and then return whatever you are not taking no questions asked and retailers are very happy to do this with you same is happening with shoes and uh, so many other products you know where you want the touch and feel you know especially in shoes you want to see the comfort level whether your toe is comfortable or not or so many things you know and thank you so much sir uh yeah we are moving ahead the time uh i will like to mention that the appreciation has come from our chairman as well and the other audience ms kiran khera is appreciating the session uh our chairman the honorable chairman is saying that both both the our guest speakers are excellent and clearly ibpc can benefit from adding them to ibpc's mentors panel for reference so thank you so much sir all the audience in this evening time you unlocked the clock and uh, we hope that retail will be unlocking and going forward very soon as it has already started the new normalities we all are learning and inshallah we will be continuing the live sessions not only the webinars very soon we will be live and we will be continuing the series of such discussions again thank you so much the support team of ibpc mr dilip sena the secretary general and the appreciating motivational words of chairman the audience thank you very much again i would like to celebrate and to say jai ganesh the today the date is ganesh chaturthi tashi and uh, the very happy new year to all celebrating the hijri muslim new year and the muharram rituals thank you so much jai hind by these words i request our general manager mr cb to end on the the session of the thank day. you so much ibpc and thank you so much saith ji thanks for inviting us thank you and thank you very much uh, everybody and most of all suresh kumar ji with folded hands i thank you for your blessings for saying such uh, you know it's a heartwarming i started the session saying that this is in the memory of my father who passed away 30 years back and you have given me you know such a lovely compliment or an uh, acknowledgement that i will pass straight to my father thank you suresh ji yeah thank you suresh ji from my side as well and thanks to the audience as well thank you so much again bye bye good night jai hind good night everyone thank you bye jai hind